January 30th, 2022. This is Mojo Weekly. I'm John. This one goes out to all my juggalos and jigglets. I hope you like it. Don't try this at home. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Fuck this shit! Uh, 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 It's Jash. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh God. Oh, I'm okay. Ah, I'm okay. I, <laughs> I, I don't think I'm posting this one on YouTube this week. That was that was stunning. I'm back. I'm okay, John. Thank you for your concern. Oh God. Oh, that was intense. What happened? I, I was just saying, I, I don't think I'm posting this one on, on YouTube this week. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was gold, Jerry. It was gold. That was stunning. I, uh, I'm at a loss for words. Um, so I, uh, I'm just going to kick it off here. Uh, wow. All right. Um, if, that, wow. If, if that intro uh, didn't get everybody ready for an unusual show. Um, what the hell happened to my pencil? <laughs> Oh, this is sad. <laughs> Jesus, there's, uh, I blacked out there. You, you're right. I've been blacking out on this podcast. Yeah. Um, so we have a different show today because there is zero news of which to speak, other than you know Sega getting out of the Japanese arcade industry altogether. Oh, well, that's sad. Um, uh, Hello Games doing a really nice thing and updating Joe Danger on uh, the iPhone simply because a an autistic fan wrote in and requested it. Um, Hmm. And uh, so those are kind of the two, the only two things that I was like, that's cool to talk about. But that, you know, both of those things would take about three minutes to talk about. So well, we uh, already talked about them. So indeed, Don, there's your news. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so instead, Josh and I were chatting yesterday and we thought, let's just each pick three um, games that we consider to be kind of hidden gems. And uh, and talk briefly about each one of those. So, Josh, were they were they three hidden gems on three somewhat obscure consoles, or just three hidden gems in general? Three hidden gems. We we talked about obscure consoles at first. And I'm like, well, shit. If we did something like the the Jaguar, like there are only two games worth playing on that thing. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Uh, any gems on there have already risen to the top. So, any console. Uh, All right, three hidden gems. Josh, I'll let you kick us off. With your first oh well, thank choice. you. Um, my first choice is on a fairly obscure console. Um, it was called the PlayStation Three. Um, and oh. and uh, it's 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 a game in a series that not a lot of people talk about, but it's the Elder Scrolls. So I picked Skyrim on the uh, PlayStation Three. I don't think a lot, enough people are talking about mm. this one. Is this you're, is this what just, you meant? Uh, you're just uh, full oh. of sass today, aren't you? All right, I'm being serious now, <laughs> my right. friend. And you, you, I'm going to start off with a game that I wasn't expecting to start off with, but it's right. a jag, a jaguar game, my friend. Jaguar. And so, <clears throat> this is my favorite jag game, and no one talks about it. Trust me. All right. Nobody. Nobody. Okay. It's not Alien vs Predator. It's not Doom. It's not Wolfenstein. It's fucking Flip Out. Flip Out. <laughs> Flip Out is awesome. So this is a like a strategy puzzle type game um, where you're trying to match up colored tiles. And so the entire game, it, it's actually one of those games that feels like it should have been a mid-90s PC game, but it came out on the Jag for some reason. It was done, I would assume, over the weekend by a company called Gorilla Soft. <laughs> All right. But I actually really, really like it. I think the music's very charming. Uh, the graphics are pretty damn good. Like this should have been ported to like the PlayStation or the N64 or something. Yeah. Or maybe even like a 16 bit or like late gen Genesis or Super Nintendo or something. But it's actually really fun. It's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's very challenging. Um, once you get into it though, um, initially I first picked it up and I bought this for like five bucks at a KB toy store back in the day. Yeah. Actually 12.95. Sorry. <laughs> Still have the price. And money. yeah. And I was like, huh, I picked it up, put it down and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'll, I'll move on to things like flashback or or Doom or some other games that came out on the Jag yeah. that I enjoyed a lot bit better, a lot more. Um, but I wound up really giving this a shot and playing through the entire thing one afternoon. And it's fucking awesome. Like it really is a cool game. It's fun. It's, it's quirky. It gets you kind of like in this mode where you feel like you're losing your mind because there's so many things in the air. And basically the whole concept of the game is you have these tiles trying to match up the colors and you have to flip them in the air so that they'll land on a different color. And it's like if a yellow one, you flip it up in the air, you try to move it over to the yellow tile that it's supposed to go on. If you have a red one, you move it off the yellow one and try to get it over to the other one. So there's so many things in the air and you're juggling so many things at once. 
it's kind of fun and it's it's jarring at first because there's nothing like it that i've ever played before um but as you get into it the more and more you play it the more fun it is so i'd recommend flip out on the atari jaguar i like it man good pull good pull all right my first choice uh Mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. a game that i'm sure you've heard of um Uh oh came out on the Sega Saturn, late in the Saturn's oh life, like around 1998, I think it came out, only in oh. Japan. Uh, this game oh. uh, is close close to my heart because it comes from uh, a developer that developed some of my favorite games, and this game is Super Tempo. Oh, Super right on. Tempo, yep. Uh, made by, uh, developed by Red, who also uh, developed uh, bon- the Bonk series, you know, they, they call yeah. the Bonk series. Um, Classic and, games. And this game is what I always hoped Bonk would look like, like in 32-bit, you know, uh, really bright, colorful, beautifully drawn, you know, uh, 2D graphics. Uh, yep. And I had not played this one until maybe, I don't know, two years ago. It took me a long time to get to this one. And um, it's it's super hard to find and, and it's super mm-hmm. expensive. But you can, you can get a repro out there if you want. You know, you can go to Etsy and get yourself a $20 repro of it, which I yep. did. Um, Not a bad idea. Or, you know, it's just straight up emulate it, whatever you want to do. But it's, right. it's, it's not, I'm going to say it's not a great game, but it is a fun game and it's an interesting game. It's a, it's a 2d huh. side scrolling platformer with a lot of wacky, weird shit going on. Um, and it's got like a wacky, big, weird shit. Yeah. It's got a musical theme to it. Right. So, uh, <clears throat> your items are like music notes and tempo is this yeah. little character who walks around with, uh, uh, headphones on and a, and a conducting baton in his hand. Um, and uh and and then you also uh can play as his girlfriend so you have different they each have different abilities and sometimes this game turns into like a really weird side scrolling shmup sometimes it turns into like a japanese game show kind of bit um there's all sorts hmm. of wacky themes and uh and levels uh, it's it just always keeps you guessing always keeps you laughing um it's just super funny crazy humor that's awesome giant 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 graphics you know like 2d sprites and stuff just, yeah. just beautiful and they're they're gorgeous it's it's my favorite graphical style is this um these these 30 definitely 2d games they're just so beautiful we talked about a stall a few weeks back yep um, yep and it's it's got perfect that, example yep and if you like that that <laughs> style if you like those beautiful uh 2d graphics this is this is a game for you the music is amazing uh, you know and for a music themed game it should be um this is actually the third in a series uh, the first game was released on 32X. That's so weird. It's not very good. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and the next one was called Tempo Junior, and that was released on the Game Gear. Also not very good. Um, That's crazy. So I don't know how they got to a third game, you know? Like, they put out two kind of duds, uh, and they were like, well, it's yeah. the third time's a charm. And, yeah, it's a good game, but... Um, Red, uh, Red never went and created a fourth game. So this was, this was kind of their last hurrah and they put everything into it. Tons of ideas. Every level is different. You know, it starts out very much like a simple 2d platformer and then immediately explodes into nonsense. Um, I love it. I love it. So that's my first choice. That's pretty awesome. Well, from, well, for my next one, I want to talk about a game that a lot of people either dis... It's, it's very polarizing on this one because a lot of people enjoy it. I shouldn't say a lot of people. Some people enjoy it, but a lot of people hate it. And that is Fantasy Star Online 3, Three. Card Card Revolution. Okay. Um, this is the one game in the series that never came out on anything else. It literally is stuck in moratorium on the GameCube. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, <clears throat> It's it's a very strange game because it took the PSO formula and completely threw it out the window and said we're we're not going to do any MMO running around and killing uh, aliens and stuff and saving the universe. You're going to play card games instead. Now it's going to be a strategy card based game. Yeah. Um, but the, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this one up and this is actually one of my favorite GameCube games, oddly enough, is the game still carries all of that PSO feel to it. The music, the characters, everything is all very PSO. And actually, it does pay homage a bit to the original Genesis games quite a bit, because instead of it just being a 
run and gun slash hack and slash MMO type game. This one actually does include a lot of the um, strategy and ideas in like a battle where you walk around and you get into a battle, yeah. just like the original Fantasy Stars. But that's pretty much where the similarities end because in that way, um, in the old PSO, or the original Fantasy Star games, you get into Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest-esque style battles, whereas this one, it's more kind of on the lines of like a Final, a Final Fantasy Tactics-ish or whatever, but you have to use cards to attack or you use whatever. And so... At the beginning of the game, you can either take the side of the creatures that live on the planet, or you can take a uh, side of the people that are coming and like infiltrating the planet, which is really interesting because you can play both sides and kind of um, get to hear both sides of the story from the entire universe of PSO. And it's super, super cool. Um, I really enjoyed it. The one of the things I enjoyed the most about it is it actually has like um, comic book style cutscenes yeah. that you saw in like Fantasy Star Four, where they did like the panels where it was like one panel would open up and it would be like, "How could you do this to me?" And then another one comes across that way, and it's like, "Because I was paid to do it," you know, and whatever. And um, it's really cool. You and w- I should. No, no. Uh, how could you do this to me? Because they paid me to do it. <laughs> oh, where's all the money then, Bucko? Well. Anyway, um, I really enjoy it. It's cool. Um, I never, ever played this online. It did have the, cap- the capabilities because it's got serial numbers and access keys and all kinds of shit inside. Yeah. But I wound up just playing through the game on my own and having a lot of fun doing it. I thought it was really cool. Um, someday it'd be cool to, if they maybe would revisit this and bring it out in like HD or something like that and just pop it online because the game's already created and it's got a great story to it. Um, but I very much so doubt it. This is a game that you can only find on the GameCube. It goes for around, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks now. I don't think it's a super expensive game. Um, but again, a lot of people don't like it because it totally was an escape from the original PSO 1 and 2 style of gameplay. But I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. Nice. All right. <clears throat> My second choice is a game that I have just became familiar with in the last month. Um, I have been on like a big Game Boy Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance terror for about the last month or two. Um, okay. and this one just kind of accidentally came to my attention because they have recently released a uh, translation patch for it. So oh, I'm going to try not to not, try not to butcher it, but it's Cairo no Tami Nikane Wanaru, which roughly oh. translates to for frog, the bell tolls. <laughs> That's amazing. And uh, this is a game Somehow I had never heard of, I don't know how, because it's a Nintendo published game for the Game Boy Really, that never came out in the US and is hmm. basically like a template for Link's Awakening. Um, it's no very, way. Yeah, it's very similar uh, in style uh, to Link's Awakening. It's a, it's a top down uh, action adventure game uh, and you play as a prince. Uh, who uh, is uh, racing his rival to rescue a princess, right? So it's very generic, hmm. uh, early 90s mm-hmm. video game story. Um, but if you look at it, you're like, yeah, man, they totally ran with this and made Link's Awakening, you know? Um, That's crazy. It's 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 a really cool game. Um, it's uh, It has the overworld, which is like the top-down... Um, you know, uh, old school 2D uh, Zelda that you're used to. And then in the dungeons, a lot like Link's Awakening, it's got the uh, side-scrolling action bits as well. Uh, The difference here is this is not uh, hack and slash like, like like a Zelda game, right? So you don't have a sword, you don't have boomerang, you don't have any of that stuff. It kind of auto battles in a way. So what you do hmm. is, is you update your stats and get to a certain level. And then every time you come across an enemy, it looks like they're like, you know, like in cartoons when they're wrestling and it's just a cloud and like stuff flying off the cloud, yeah. you know, a cloud of dust. It looks like that. And yep. then based on your stats, uh, you win or you'll lose a couple hearts or whatever. And, and, and then it's the same with the bosses. If you go into the boss levels or boss battles, uh, and you attack a certain part of the boss and you are not statted up enough, you're going to lose a heart, right? Huh. Um, but man, it That's is really interesting. It is really cool. It's got like the overworld towns that you have to go and do a lot like Zelda. Um, and, uh, and, um, it's, it's, I just really recommend it. The translation that they, that this is a fan translation and it's really, really good. Um, really super, super easy to find on, you know, on the internet, if you just want to Google it, um, but uh, it's the only way to play this in English. And you do kind of need to play it in English because there's a ton of text. Um, so, yeah. 
Uh, That's super cool. For Frog, the bell tolls. Uh, I've also seen it for listed frog. as the frog for whom the bell tolls. So either way, <laughs> either way, you'll find it. Um, I found it just by Googling for Frog, the bell tolls, and I've played it a bunch, and it's it's, it's <clears throat> super fun. That's super cool. Yeah. I think that actually sounds really awesome. I'm going to yeah. look that one up. I think you'd like it. I bet I would. Your turn. I bet I would. I'm, um, I'm going to go to one of my favorite game consoles of all time, and that is the... MFN Sega Dreamcast. And I'm going to talk about a game called Fur Fighters. Oh man, Fur Fighters, yes. Yes, right? <laughs> now my 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 case is not great. This has been falling off for like 10 years. Um so there's Fur Fighters. Yeah. Um I I want to talk about this one because there are actually two different ports of this. Um the original came out on the Dreamcast and it was absolutely amazing and when the Dreamcast passed away, in its in its glory in it, 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 too early, my friend. Yeah. Um, when it died, um, in two thousand one, um, they acclaim wound up pop, popping this over with with what is this? Bizarre Creations. Yeah. I've never even heard of Bizarre Creations. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, they popped it over to the PlayStation two and made what I would consider a pretty shitty port. Um, I did not like it. It was all cell shaded. It was ugly. They added like a couple new levels here and there, but no, it was just a mediocre port of a fantastic game. And I think. Most people wound up playing that mediocre port and saying, like, wow, Fur Fighters, we're not missing much. Yeah. But, oh, my friend, are you missing quite a bit? The Dreamcast came natively with those four controller ports. And this, I would say, Fur Fighters multiplayer and all of the different maps that they gave you was on par with such legendary games like Mario Kart or Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube. Like, when you're playing and you have four people over and you have a few drinks and you're partying it up, Fur Fighters is one of the coolest ways to enjoy an evening with four friends. The single player game is pretty fun too. Um, it's good. It's a fine little game. Um, they made they managed to take a very gory and hilarious, almost Conker's Bad Fur Day style game. I wouldn't say it's as raunchy as Conker because it's not. Yeah. But they managed to put a pretty gory game and put it as T for Teen because they're all stuffed animals and everything you kill, stuffing pops out of them <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah. And so there's so much uh, decapitation of stuffed animals that it's freaking amazing. Um, but the gameplay itself plays like a first-person shooter-ish. Um, you use, I think, the buttons to move strafing left and right and forward and back and use the analog stick to look around because there's only one analog stick on our lovely Dreamcast. Um, kind of like a la the N64 style of uh, first-person shooters, the way they would do it. But right. um, but you, your character is on the screen, so you do... It's like that over-the-shoulder almost, Gears of War-ish kind of, but pre gears of war. Um, and the way the gameplay is, you just kind of running around shooting bad guys, saving your girlfriends, you know, your team, your whatever. And, uh, it gives you multiple different characters that have different abilities. There's like a, a dog that's kind of overall like your Mario of the game. And then there's a cat and a rabbit. And the rabbit of course can jump to certain areas in the game that you can't normally get to with the dog or the cat. The cat can sneak and get down on all fours and move quicker. Like it's a really, really cool uh, kind of a mascot platformer that was pseudo first person shooter that they threw it on the Dreamcast. And nobody talks about this. Every top 10 Dreamcast game list, it's like, here's a bunch of games and here we love this Soul Calibur, Sonic, blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, Fur Fighters is fantastic. Not enough people <laughs> talk about this shit. And it is excellent. I, I, I think of it as one of my favorite, favorite Dreamcast games. And if there's ever a time when I got kids over or people over or whatever, and we're like, what do you want to play? Fur Fighters. Let's put in Fur Fighters. Like it's as fun as Bomberman for me. Wow, um, right, I really man. enjoy well, it. At, at Midwest Gaming Classic this year, I'm going to be looking out for Fur Fighters. Let's do it. I'll put on Fur Fighters. I'll have a big ass 32 inch CRT, and then we'll have four controllers, and boom, Fur Fighters. It's All it's right. done. I'll book it. Book that shit, Dano. All right, my final game. I wanted. I was thinking hard about which which third game to do, and I was like, you know, I've been talking about games that are uh, uh, older. So let's talk about a game that's on a newer console that everybody listening can just go out and purchase right now if they want to. Uh, this one is oh for the Nintendo Switch. It is an amazing game. I can't believe I haven't heard <clears throat> anybody talking about this. I found out about it on a YouTube video, just like this random YouTube video that I saw. And I'm like, how the fuck have I not heard of this game? Uh, this game is All called... All right, let me write this down. Yep. This, if you don't already know about this one, Josh, I feel like you'd love it. It is called Steel Assault. Mm -mm. Don't Steel know it. Steel Assault. It is out on Windows and Switch. And this is an old school side-scrolling platform game. Uh, it feels to me a lot like Gunstar Heroes or, or Metal Slug 
or okay. um, it's got a little bit of Bionic Commando in it because you've got like a, you know, nice uh, fucking, you know, the rope gun thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Um, and and uh, it's, it's basically a zip line that you can extend out. Um, I like graphically, it. I like it's, it. Gra- graphically, it's pixel art. It's beautiful pixel art. Um, it's it looks very sixteen bit, only like way more hardcore. I mean, it, I feel like this would, if this were around back in the day, it probably would have had to been on the Neo Geo. Um, and it's it's mm, it's definitely fast paced, action packed. It's a quick game, um, and it has multiple difficulty levels. So if it's kicking your ass, just bump it down a little bit and practice. Um, nice. it's just, it's really, really, really good. And I had never heard of, uh, the, the developer before there's Zenovia interactive is what they're called Zenovia interactive. Uh, they hmm. kickstarted this game, I guess, uh, back in 2015. Um, and it was released just this past September. Uh, and fucking it's really good. So if you have steam, uh, if you're a steam user, or if you have a switch, definitely check it out i think it's i think it's under 20 bucks um dude i'm down i'm definitely checking that out i i I played it i downloaded it like right after i heard about it so like a few months ago and then for whatever reason i just never had time to play it i was like i'll download it now i'll get to it later sure about two weeks ago i put it on and i played it on the tv and i was like fuck this is really good um so uh that's awesome it's the 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 um the main character has a whip like an eight-way electrical whip uh, and, awesome. and dodge and a, and a slide. And then he's got this zip line that he can extend out and the zip line's a big thing. So you'll have to jump, extend the zip line, jump again, extend the, extend the zip line. Yep. There's an awesome boss level that comes early in the game where you have to like, uh, hold onto the zip line while you're shooting up, shooting up at the boss and then like move to a different place. It's, it's really cool, man. Um, that is awesome. I, I love it a lot. I think you would like it a lot. I know kind of how you like the old school kind of games. The one thing I would recommend is, uh, changing the default button layout. Um, it was really like unintuitive for me. It didn't make a lot mm. of sense and they do let you like customize the layout. I was going to say, and they let you do that. That's yeah. big for Nintendo. Holy shit. Yeah. So like <clears throat> five minutes in, I'm like, I got to change these buttons around. It's not, I'm not getting this gameplay. And then once I did, so what does each button do? There's jump and shoot, I assume. Yeah, and there's then jump and shoot in the zip line. The um, zip line. Okay. And, and I, I can't remember how they were mapped by default, but it just didn't make sense to me. So when I, when I gotcha. switched it, it got a lot better. So, you know, it reminds me of those nice. games like, um, uh, 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 Chrome, uh, what's, uh, fucking the Chrome game. Chrome Hounds? No, no, <laughs> no, no. The, uh, the Blazing Chrome. That's the one. Blazing like, Chrome. Like Blazing... Dude, I keep saying, I keep doing that. Yeah. Blazing right. Chrome and, uh, the Ninja one that came out not too long ago. Um, you know, these, these really, really great games that play <clears throat> like you remember old games playing, but right. Better. Something new. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like yeah, faster yeah. and the graphics are definitely a lot like harder to pull off and they would not have been possible back on those games, but it's like this right. really intense pixel art, um, that is beautiful and, and action packed. So that is super Steel cool. Steel Assault. I highly recommend Steel that Assault. One. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely going to check it out. So I, I was just looking at the page here and it said that many of the artists on the game had worked on GBA and DS games and you can totally no tell. You can totally tell. That's so cool. Damn. <laughs> So that's it, man. We did our three, uh, our three each hidden gem games. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That's super cool. So let's move it over to the new releases. All right. Not much going on this week. Just a few games. Uh, looks like we've got some more <clears throat> stuff coming up next week, but in the meantime, uh, life is strange remastered collection for, uh, all the Playstations, all the Xboxes, Stadia, and PC. So there you go. Mm. You can get it pretty much anywhere except for Switch. Nice. The Waylanders, never heard of it, coming out on PC. Mm. Uh, Super excited. Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments, coming to Switch, mm. which is uh, it's an older game. I think it was on PS4 before this. It might have even been a PS Plus game at one point. Uh, anyway, but it's coming to Switch. And then finally, Dying Light 2, Stay Human, coming to all PlayStations, all Xboxes, and the PC. Damn. 
So that's well, that. I'm not buying any of them. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to buy any of them. You know, I've, I've, I've actually been interested in that Life is Strange game. Um, there's a lot of really cool, like, fan arts that are out there, and I keep seeing people, like, creating these things or taking screenshots of the game. They're like, Life is Strange, and people are like, oh, man, that game hit me so hard. And it's like, never played it, never even yeah. heard of it. I mean, I, I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. Like, is it good? Have it you seems played like one? It's like one of those feeling games, you know? Like, oh. I have feelings, and I want to express them through the medium of video games kind of game i don't know i could be wrong that's the vibe i get from every time i see a trailer or something and there's a girl with a (laughs) stocking cap on strumming a guitar yeah i'm like okay it's one of those games i got you one of those i could pass i'll get back to my chrome blazing chrome and (laughs) steel assault because i'm a man damn it that's right we're men we're not i don't have feelings (laughs) all right (laughs) (laughs) you know who is in touch with his feelings his name is dale and he's up next with his retro recap Hey, what's up, Mojo Weekly listeners? This is Dale, and welcome back to this week's recap of the latest retro video game re-releases, remasters, and remakes. As always, credit for this goes to Mr. GSK from Retronauts.com and LimitedRunGames.com. Let's get to it. Hitting phys- physically this week is River City Girls Zero for the Switch and PlayStation 4 and 5 via Limited Run Games open pre-order for $35 for the Standard Edition, $65 for the Classic Edition, and of course $150 for the Ultimate Edition. Now this is actually a newly localized version of the Super Famicom title Shin Niketsu Kua Kunyo Tachi no Banka. And this beat em up update contains a new intro, after stage cutscenes, and the expected collector's edition from Limited Run that includes action figures, keychains, soundtrack, and a poster. And it is the background music for this week. And just a reminder, this is uh, designed in the Kunyo Kun graphical style and is not an all new game like River City Girls was from a couple years ago. Moving on to digital releases, with the Arcade Archives release this week is Pistol Daimyo no Buken. And it is a formerly Japanese exclusive shmup that originally landed in that region's arcades in 1990 from Namco. And it is available on Switch and PS4 for $8. And as GSK notates, it is more of an irreverent shmup with bombastic enemy design and attacks. And your ship's ammo has three levels of pressure sensitive power attacks. And also hitting digitally this week is Elastomania Remastered for Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC via Steam for $10. And it is an updated version of the cult classic browser motorbike physics game that at an initial glance looks like the inspiration for bigger hits like Trials and Urban Trails Playground. And this game first came out around 2000 for browsers, so that is why it explains the more... Uh, that era look and feel for the game. And rounding things off today is the Snowed In Game Video Game Pay What You Want ebook bundle you can find at storybundle.com. And there is just a pay what you want and curate how you want your donation to go to for the charity of your choice or to the authors for a bunch of video game ebooks. That wraps it up for this week. You can visit the mojomenace.com forums to find the notes for this week's releases along with handy links. We'll throw it back to you, John and Jay. All right, Josh. Typically, uh, this is where we have our game spotlight, but since we spent uh, pretty much most of the episode spotlighting games, we're going to do this. Time for your last question. All right, we talked about hidden gems. Oh, my God. Hidden gems, right? Yeah, yeah. I want you to tell me one game that was considered to be like a flagship game or or at least was very highly rated. Everybody loved it on a console that you agree with. You're like, yep, that game is the shit. So I'll give you an example. Super Mario 64, right? Kind of the flagship game for the N64. Everybody loved it. And you're like, yep, that's that's one game that I can totally get behind. Because I know you like to pull out the obscure. I want you, sure. Josh, I want you to talk about a game where you're like, I'm jumping on the bandwagon. This game is this is the business. Well, um, a game that everyone knows and a game that everyone loves. There's there's mm-hmm. there's those moments in your gaming lives where certain things, games come out where they're just called the game. Yeah. Remember that as a child? It's like, Oh, it's coming. And you know, the date, yeah. um, I, I think of a few, I, and some of them that you could go about super Mario three. There you go. I mean, yeah. man, everyone had it. My nephew got it. We played it 
from beginning to end over the span of like three weeks. And it was just like, that's the game. Like, yes, you can't miss it. Um, and in Mario world, when the super Nintendo was released, fuck. Yeah. Another one. That's another one. Halo on the Xbox. That's the game. Like that's you, why you, why'd you buy the console? Here it is. This is why, this is why I got this over PlayStation. This is why I didn't get a GameCube, you know, whatever. Halo. Yeah. That's another one. Um, but I would go with, and one of the, one of the, 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 the moments when I realized that there was something outside of say, outside of Nintendo and this is before I even got into turbo. Cause I didn't, I wasn't an early adopter in a turbo. I waited until 94 when everything was going to be in clearance. And then I, bought it because that's my was i was excited about yeah but the first time i ever realized was anything outside of nintendo was on sonic tuesday and everybody was talking about sonic 2 dude sonic 2 is going to be the shit you got to try it you got to try it and i was like and eh, whatever and then i played it on sonic tuesday when it was released and holy shit was that fun <laughs> yeah. um i just you know and it's whatever you graphically the music whatever you want to say how about it looks better than in nintendo or it looks better than whatever else was going on that speed and the gameplay and oh Sonic 2. It'll always go down as one of those things. It's just like, oh, shit. This is what all the cool kids in school are talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Sonic 2. All right. Sonic 2. Hey. Uh, I, I, I had a few that I would thought of. Um, and one of them was um, you, you mentioned standing in line or getting in line in, on Sonic oh, Tuesday, yeah. right? Um, yep. So one that I bought into the hype for, for sure, was uh, Ocarina of Time. Uh, I stood oh, in line yeah. at, at, at our local mall, uh, that yep. you and I have probably stood in line together with, uh, software, etc. It was the first time I had ever stood in line for any game on release day. Wow. First time ever. Wow. I was there to get my golden cartridge. Uh, yeah. I got it. <laughs> nice. I got it. And, uh, totally like that game. I, I, it, it was, it was released just before Thanksgiving. And I finished it. Uh, I was in college. I finished it over Thanksgiving break, like within the span that's of like awesome. four days. I think I just plowed through it and I fucking loved it. Hmm. Um, so that's one. Yep. That's, that's one where I totally bought into the hype. That was the first time nice. I had bought into the hype where I was like, yep, I'm all in on this. I'm, I'm going down, I'm standing in line. I'm getting my gold cartridge. I'm doing it. That's amazing. Yeah. It was worth it. Ocarina of Time at the time was amazing. It was just perfect. Yeah. Even if Game Pro thought it was a four out of five, fuck Game Pro. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like the one game they didn't give a five out of five to. Yeah, exactly. They're like, mm, not this one. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> we're giving it to Bubsy instead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we should do it. We should do a conversation once where we talk about some of the games that we've stood in line for and which ones were worth it and which ones we were like disappointed in. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. Because I've stood in line for quite a few. I was thinking mm -hmm. about that too. All right, that's it for us. Uh, until next week, uh, you can find us at mojomenace.com. On the main page, you'll find links to our forums, our Discord chat, and our merch store, uh, where things are often 35% off. So throw me a bone, will you? Buy a fucking shirt. Um, throw anyway. me a bone. Uh, anyway, uh, youtube.com slash mojo menace, where you can usually watch this podcast. You can watch Josh and I make funny faces and then just for about three minutes, just kind of fuck around while Dale does his thing. Uh, and you can watch that whack ass intro Josh did this time. So, uh, um, what did I do? I forget. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. It's going to be great. I forget. Uh, I blacked out twitch.tv slash Mojo menace. And most of the social medias you can find us at Mojo menace. Josh, where can they find you? I like how you say most because you yeah. boycotted the most popular one. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so this week, I beat Dragon Slayer. Woohoo! It was freaking amazing. Um, but if you're watching us on YouTube, you're seeing that like three weeks late now. So check us out on Twitch. It's twitch.tv forward slash Joshua Turbo. Or you can always find me on Twitter, on the Twitterverse, at underscore Joshua Turbo. Don't forget the underscore, as it is the most important underscore in all of the internet. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Sing along, motherfuckers. Eat the tacos, come eat the tacos. Eat the tacos, come eat them up. Eat the tacos, come eat the tacos. Eat the tacos, come eat them up. Ooh. Eat the tacos, come eat the tacos. Eat the tacos, come eat the I did it, I fucking won! I won!